Do you hate bugs? Are you terrified of the looming threat of AI? Do you believe in peace, freedom, and democracy through superior firepower? Then do your part and join the Helldivers. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I didn't do fucking shit. Super Earth's elite task force is the last line of offense against the forces of evil, saving freedom and promoting liberty across the galaxy. With more soldiers joining the fight every day and only a 92.2% graduation rate, we've put together a crash course that's about four months too late for those cadets struggling to spread democracy, those waiting for their turn to get a cup of liberty, or those who just want to watch some propaganda in between shifts. But first, a word from our sponsors. So, uh, there is no sponsor. So instead, feel free to let me know which of these videos you'd like to see next. After giving your Super Destroyer a name that strikes fear into the hearts of our enemies, choose one of the many exotic locations to liberate. Look, I'm not one to complain, but why do we want to live here? Each planet's unique living conditions will affect how you get to work. God, I hate Heath. The sights you'll see. God, I miss Heath. What local plant life you'll encounter. Fuck. And what other potential challenges you'll have to overcome. That's not what I wanted to call it, right? Oh. Helldivers across the galaxy are given orders by the mysterious entity known only as Joel working together to reclaim planets, destroy planets, save the children, and fight back against tyranny. Over here, we're liberating ugly planets, bug planets. Purely existing for the harvesting of Element 710, the Terminids can be terminated in a variety of ways, but it helps to know the best ways. Scavengers aren't a threat on their own and often aren't worth the ammunition, but like many of the following bugs, are cowards who know the only way they pose any threat at all is with overwhelming numbers. Avoid these speed bumps by taking down the crybaby before they spit orange mist. Armored in the front but squishy in the back, hive guards can be relinquished from their post by getting underneath them or with back shots. Your basic arachnid warrior or commander isn't too smart, but you can blow off a limb and it's still 86% combat effective. Here's a tip, blow off another limb to slow them down, or aim for the head and run before you get put down for good. Kill the commanders first because they can call in additional warriors. While their babies exist for skeet shooting practice, fully grown hunters slow you down in an attempt to overrun you. If you do get jumped, interrupt their follow up with a quick jab. Because they like to hop around and surround you, the best practice is if you see white, shoot on sight. The bigger, badder hunters, these ugly motherfuckers are true predators, but due to intergalactic copyright laws, we call them stalkers. Practically invisible, surprisingly durable, and incredibly threatening, these are the only bugs actively hunting you. Turn the tables by stalking them to begin the eviction process. It might be a good idea to do this before getting ambushed in the middle of a fight. Thankfully, these and the rest of the bugs aren't capable of calling for backup, because they are the backup. The spewers are harder to miss, but aren't any less threatening with vomit that can melt you instantly. Running or diving is encouraged. While it may be tempting to pop their sack, don't get caught in the splash zone. Shove some medium AP rounds down their throat instead. You'll likely see smaller bile bugs when spewers are present, so keep your distance to keep yourself from getting slimed. Quick, thick, and pretty frickin' sick. Chargers are called that for a reason. Avoid their stampede at all costs because if the initial impact doesn't kill you, the landing probably will. While they can temporarily be used for good by taking out other bugs or even nests. Ignore their bubble butts. All that armor is protecting their true weak points, so strip them, cook them, or blow their minds. If you gave a spewer the armor of a charger and added about 30 feet of ugly, you'd get the Bile Titan. Powerful strikes, projectile vomit beams, and long legs mean it's better to engage from afar. And if you can't, then I hope you passed your endurance exam with flying colors. Whether it's two rockets down their throat, repeated pod drops, weaponized acts of god, or ridiculous amounts of heavy ordnance, these gigantic bugs require the biggest of swatters to take down. Rumors are spreading that flying bugs have been spotted on various planets. In this carefully doctored footage, you'll see that, if they did exist, staying low makes you harder to hit. A turret would be useful for watching your back while you destroy their hive with a hell bomb or help from a superior avian. These are the bugs we're up against, and I'm absolutely certain there isn't anything bigger or angrier that we'll encounter anytime soon. Nope, not at all. 
So far, we've managed to push the bugs out of the Orion sector, and now we're moving on. Freedom's greetings. I'm your host, Coretta Kelly, with breaking news. The automatons have just launched surprise invasions of multiple developed worlds. Planets can be freed and lost in the blink of an eye. Just oh, ask the shit. citizens of Draupnir. But democracy arrives all the same. Even if it involves escorting lemmings through a sea of chrome. The automaton threat may be very different from the bugs, but with the right know-how, you too will rage against the machines. Just make sure to aim for their weak points. If it glows, that's where the bullet goes. Their main forces are made up of sentient scrap metal soldered to machine guns and rocket launchers. But why take the hits yourself when the terrain or structures in front of you can do it for you? And if they try to flush you out with a grenade, make sure you win the game of hot potato. The occasional bot with swords for arms or a stolen jump pack will also try to force you out of cover. This wouldn't be a problem if the jump packs didn't make them suicide bombers. So remember, if they jump your way, stay away. Rumors have spread that commissars are the only ones capable of calling in dropships. But that is automaton propaganda. Dropships bring in reinforcements of all shapes and sizes, if they make it to their destination. Scout Striders pilot walking turrets that are extremely vulnerable to any explosive directly to the face, or simply walking around them. The Berserkers are as threatening as they look, until you repeatedly hit the glowy part above their nuts and bolts. While you can just uninstall the chainsaw arms, they still have legs. Placed in a suit of armor and given a laser cannon, shield, or rocket launchers, the Devastators may look like the shining example of robot engineering, but they forgot to cover their heads. In a pinch, you can also disable the rocket packs or short circuit the heavy devies. The automatons learned their lesson when designing the Hulk. Massive slabs of metal outputting heavy firepower with absolutely no weak points at all. Well, at least they learned to cover their faces. Disarm them to get rid of their weapons or break their legs if you can't aim for the face. You've done your duty. You may extract with honor. Sadly, the bots got tanks before us. Don't stand where the cannon is pointing. Attack its weak point for massive damage. Or drop a ton of explosives on it. Tread carefully because for some reason they're still dangerous even when destroyed. Okay, but why though? The bot's worst defense is proving that bad dogs do exist. Unless you enjoy mobile turrets and the frequent birth of devastators, put them down by exposing a weak point on either side, using an entire orbital laser, overwhelming amount of explosives or shining a light in its eye. Their biggest threats are the various outposts scattered around the map that are almost impossible to ignore. Not wanting to be outdone by the bugs, their latest inconvenience sends out gunships. Shooting them down solves the issue temporarily until you shut down their factory with a hell bomb. It's strongly advised to fight through these outposts and destroy them so they don't make your mission any more annoying. Yeah, I know. Taking these outposts also gives you a chance to use the bot's own weapons against them. Yeah, there you go, Havoc. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah! This, this works. Yeah! <laughs> Good job! <laughs> Once you've set your annihilation destination, there's plenty of different ways for you to dish out democracy, which typically involve explosions, playing keypad DDR, more explosions, mandatory patriotism, ecological warfare, assassination, Moving the antenna so your super destroyer gets a better signal, sending a message, property damage, making an omelette, and even more explosions. Freedom, triumph over tyranny once more. As you take on tougher missions, you'll be rewarded with even tougher missions, and eventually you'll have to complete a campaign of missions to move the needle. On these tougher missions, enemies that were once rare or high profile targets are now common occurrences, and some may have even picked up a few new tricks. While it's undoubtedly fun to kill everything, remember, you have a job to do, and you're not getting paid to take out that patrol. Stealth and hit and run tactics are incredibly effective because our enemies are fucking stupid. There's no need to rely on shit and run tactics. Once victory is secured for Super Earth, you can extract. But the overachievers can opt to complete secondary objectives like silencing bug propaganda or standing still for 40 seconds. Some optional objectives aren't just for the experience or pride of a job well done, and may be prioritized to help make your main objective even easier. I can see! Loading artillery cannons lets you rain additional freedom. Hacking into local satellites makes you a more effective loot goblin. And if the robots are jamming, fix it. 
After others have done the research for me, it seems that completing the main objective really pisses off our enemies. Do with that information what you will. Demolition jobs permit the usage of C-4000. It's suggested to let your allies know when arming it to avoid unintended casualties. Wait, wait I, I did you, is the bomb right. explode? Several have recently been misplaced, so be careful if you happen to find any out there. It's never a bad idea to check your map to keep tabs on nearby enemies. Your map also highlights enemy outposts, so you can aid in the ongoing housing crisis. Grenades are usually the go-to for factories and nests, but don't be afraid to get creative when smoking them. Chargers are stupid but effective wrecking balls, and if the bots open their doors to you, make sure they regret it. Your Super Destroyer can't stay in low orbit forever. After the mission time expires, a Pelican will be sent down for extraction, and you'll no longer be able to use any stratagems, including reinforcements or supplies. Remember, we're all in this together. You can always send out an SOS for backup. Send dudes! You mean nudes? I'm in a fight! I need more men! Basic communication with your squad mates is easy as long as you want to point something out, or say one of these lines on the chat wheel. The best way to communicate with your squad mates, though, is through actions, not words. Keep an eye on everyone's health and inventory levels so you know the best time to call for supplies. A good way to avoid wasting ammunition is stopping and dropping, or at least monitoring where the circle is on your HUD. Running out of ammo doesn't mean running out of use. Think outside the box by leaving the combat zone to be branded a traitor, have your Super Destroyer fire 380mm shells at you, and run for your life. If the outside of the map is slightly out of reach, while there aren't any melee weapons yet, the Super People's Elbow can be used to put down weaker targets, stagger slightly larger ones, or save allies from certain death. Keep in mind that friendly fire does exist. Down. <laughs> no! <laughs> what? It, it does damage? But so does friendly, friendly fire. Actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. On your quest for prosperity, you're more than likely to take a few bumps and incur minor injuries. You won't get far with a broken leg, good luck shooting straight with that broken arm, and if you're lucky, the bugs will get you before you drown in your own blood. One hit from your stim numbs any existing or ongoing pain, and gives you the stamina to keep going for two seconds. Remember, a dead diver is one last gun shooting at the enemy. Thank you. Also, multitasking is difficult. Just because it sounds like you used a stim, it doesn't mean you actually did. If a soldier falls, call in another by making the Helldiver sign of the cross and tossing a beacon. Don't throw me in the pit, please, don't throw me in the pit. Why would you throw me in the pit? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a grenade, I am a person. Technically correct. Reinforcing Helldivers aren't grenades. They're piloted orbital strikes. No way! <laughs> Hell pods can be steered into enemies or objectives, meaning tactically dying is indeed a strategy. Just be careful when shooting yourself into a bug hole. Well, this sucks. Also, I feel it's important to note that because it was never taught in basic training, Helldivers don't know how to swim. After exhausting the reinforcement budget, you'll have to wait until more reinforcements are approved. I'm here. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> that was our last race, man! Democracy. If there's no reinforcements available, as long as the main objective is completed, it's still a victory for the good guys. But failing to extract means losing any hard-earned samples you've found. Throughout the worlds we liberate are points of interest that may be holding ship upgrade money, support money, fashion and firearm money, or premium money. Some are found at research stations or enemy outposts. Others inside a solo Helldiver's worst nightmare. Shipping containers that need to be blown open. Or by following the yellow glow to the treasure below. Appropriating bug and robot technology upgrades your super destroyer and turns your crew into meth heads so they work faster, increasing your DPM. Harder missions have harder to find samples, with a cockroc always having super samples on extreme or harder missions. If a Helldiver goes down, make sure to recover their samples. As long as they make it off planet, everybody gets them. No offense, but it sounds like some fucking commie gobbledygook. A good way to ensure samples return with you is by dropping them off at the extraction zone and leaving them there until the mission's finished, not bringing them all the way across the map. This is unlike the other currencies which are earned regardless of extraction. Requisition slips are used to purchase new toys to play with. Warbond medals are earned by fighting for Super Earth or awarded for winning at Hide and Seek, and are used to unlock the most important thing for a Helldiver. New capes. Also, weapons, armor, emotes, and boosters. 
War bonds function like a battle pass, where spending X amount of medals unlocks a new tier, but are much better because they never expire, even the premium ones. These are unlocked with super credits, which are acquired through war bonds, points of interest, or the numbers on mom's credit card. Super credits are also used for purchasing the latest and greatest in Helldiver Couture. Armor isn't just for looking heroic. Lighter armor helps outrun our enemies, heavier armor soaks up more damage, and some sets come with deeper pockets. Good drugs. Rubber boots. The protection of democracy itself. It is but a scratch. Or other benefits. UAV online. If looks could kill, the bugs and bots would have been eradicated weeks ago. But they don't. That's why we have guns, airstrikes, and orbital laser cannons. The R&D department will surely make adjustments to these, and I'm hoping they'll let us tweak our guns further, but until then, we can still modify many weapons in the field to adapt to the immediate threat. The jack of all trades that won't let you down. Assault rifles work in every situation, but there's usually better tools for specific jobs. An SMG is one handy gun, letting you fire while blocking bullets or side hustling for Super Amazon. Perfect for the Helldiver with places to be and things to kill. With options for those suffering from obsessive reloading disorder and no pump chumps, shotguns are a blast. Marksman rifles reward being a marksman. I don't know what I expected. Trade magazine size and automatic fire for long distance projectiles that put down anyone stupid enough to be on the other side of your scope. If you're too lazy to aim for a weak point, try shooting bigger bullets. If the standard versions of these weapons aren't your cup of liberty, don't worry, there's also a liberator that respects your personal space, punishers that double as DMRs or lob blue balls. My personal favorite, the pyrotechnics gun, and much more. If you're a nerd, grab a science gun, like the lethal laser pointer, static shotgun, or laser liberator. You'll never have to reload again as long as you fry the bad guys without frying your heat sink. This is my boomstick. This is my stick that shoots boomsticks. And this is my pocket-sized boomstick. Your other choices for a sidearm are the Redeemer, Verdict, Bushwhacker, or the Senator. The Dagger is actually a butter knife, and the Peacemaker is irrelevant. The Machine Pistol spits a lot of lead. The Polar Eagle is reliable. The Triple Barrel can be fired one at a time or all at once. And the Revolver can do this. Grenades are little balls of death and destruction, with impact grenades being even better at punching a hole in a crowd or hitting hard to reach weak points, but require more precision when taking down nests, factories, and, well, anything in general. My bad. Trade explosive power for damage over time with one of the hot ones, and yes, you can commit arson with them. To make an enemy appear less threatening, stick a sparkler to them, and if you throw enough, it might actually kill them. There's also special grenades that ensure the eagle never misses, make it harder for enemies to find you. I guess it was just my imagination. Or stab them. They can't take down outposts though, so make sure you've got something else to compensate for that. Unlock through war bonds, boosters are benefits for the whole squad, making you harder, better, faster, or stronger. If you thought choosing your equipment was tough, good news, there's over 50 stratagems and you can only bring four on a mission. Putting the correct code into the Magic 8-Ball rewards you with support from the sky in the form of supplies, dudes, heavy weaponry, backpacks, and more. Stratagems are called in once they leave your hand, so be careful not to drop them. The machine gun and its little brother drown enemies in lead, firing at full auto, fuller auto, or fullest auto, with the stalwart trading penetration and power for being able to reload on the go. The heavier machine gun has less ammo capacity because it fires bigger bullets. Microwave enemies with a laser cannon. For short range cooking, the king of the grill can grab a flamethrower to watch the world and inevitably themselves burn. Unlimited ammo means unlimited. The arc thrower zaps enemies of all sizes, chains lightning that sometimes strikes your allies, oh shit, I'm sorry. disarmors, and has a shocking range. If you want a long distance relationship, that works. The AMR is great at taking down everything the bots throw at you, and I mean everything. While a shell of its former self, the railgun is still effective against pretty much anything you point it at, and when it's not, shift into maximum overdrive. But there's a reason it's called unsafe mode, because if you wait too long before fire, if you prefer your explosions at a distance, the grenade launcher is great for dispersing crowds and handling renovations. Just remember, the grenades need to fly for a bit before they're armed. 
When you need a bigger boom, call down the expendable anti-tank launcher and get a second absolutely free. These one and done launchers are rapidly dispatched, meaning every minute you get a very precise orbital strike and two rockets. That's three chargers down for the price of one stratagem. It's nerdy your cousin takes a bit of time to charge up, and you can swap to your primary while it cools off. Both are perfect for the on-the-go Helldiver who doesn't have time for reloading. For Helldivers who don't mind taking the time to reload, or want to hit the enemy with the unstoppable power of friendship, there's the recoilless rifle, spear, airburst rocket launcher, and autocannon. Coordinated Helldivers can use the patented backpack buddy system to assist with quick reloads that keep the firepower flowing. Rocket launchers flatten the biggest targets, disarm or disarmer, and drop dropships. But if aiming is overrated, the spear will lock onto targets and buildings for you, when it wants to. The airburst rocket launcher puts the power of the cluster bomb in the palm of your hands. The autocannon lacks the raw power of the rocket launchers because it's good at literally everything else. Seriously, the only things it can't do are take down titans and file my taxes. The downside to using these is that unless someone else is sworn to carry your burdens, you can't hand out lunchboxes, jump away from your problems, hide behind a shield, or have your very own guard dog. If you like the idea of someone else doing all the work while you get all the credit, use a dog and a turret. Just don't get in their way. Sure, you could shred everything with the HMG emplacement yourself, but why bother when there's machine gun and gatling sentries to mow down fodder for you? And if you expect literally heavy resistance, bring the autocannon or rocket turret instead. If you can't find a spot with a good line of sight, there's no hiding from a turret that lobs shells up and over obstacles. To minimize civilian and friendly casualties, the EMS version will hold enemies still for you. But if you prefer shock or awe tactics, spring traps with a zapstick or a minefield. Bigger mines are better against bigger targets. The shield generator is obviously useful against the bot's firearms, but also works as an Uno reverse card against file titans. All of these blue beacon stratagems are delivered in a drop pod, and like any heavy metal object dropped from orbit, can kill just about anything it lands on. Meaning yes, even your supplies act as very precise orbital strikes. If you want more reliable depth from above, choose one of the red stratagems. Just keep in mind that Destroyer and Eagle currently don't know how to follow the red beacons, so you'll have to use the precision strike on a mobile or barely mobile targets, or lead your strikes accordingly. If you need a crowd controlled, there's the Gatling Barrage and Orbital Shotgun. Helldivers tired of explosives can render their foes useless with an EMS strike, or drop a deadly stink bomb on them. Oh, there, there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Need an outpost or objective gone, but don't feel like going in? Toss a barrage and have your super destroyer do the work for you. These are actually good now because the previous orbital operator was replaced. Sorry, sir. Need to delete someone, but don't feel like aiming? Have your super destroyer drop a giant slab of metal from orbit on the largest target near the beacon. And when you need to delete several guys, rain literal fire with a laser that vaporizes the biggest target currently standing. This obscene power comes at a cost and can only be used three times per mission. But don't confuse that with the Eagle Stratagem's number of uses. The Eagle comes fully loaded with whatever airstrikes you choose and leaves to get more after using them up or whenever you send it away. Eagle 1 rearming. Be back shortly. With more uses, the strafing run and cluster bomb quickly clear chaff while airstrikes pack a bigger payload that can be used less often. The napalm version looks 10 times cooler, but it can't destroy outposts. Positioning is important. The strafing run is delivered straight ahead, while the cluster bomb and airstrikes are dropped from side to side. The thought process behind smoke screens is that the enemy can't kill if it can't see. But on the same token, the enemy can't kill if they're already dead. The 110mm rocket pods are great against armor and have more uses, but they are nothing compared to dropping 500 kilograms of bomb for a super earth shattering kaboom.
Outfitted with Gatling guns, auto cannons, rocket launchers, and whatever the hell diver standing on top is using, exosuits are great at providing a short boost of power and making you a bigger target. With so many options to choose from, I bet you're wondering what is the best loadout. The best gun is the one in your hands. The best armor is the one that keeps you from dying. The best stratagems help you beat the enemy. And the best boosters are the ones that get used. So please, if you're playing with lower level people, use the later unlock boosters so they can actually use one of the few they have. Is that a cop out? Yes. But I don't want to further date this video because Arrowhead rebalances things all the time. Instead, here's some loadouts that vary in fun and effectiveness, like the Flaming Hot Cheeto, its cousin the Geneva Checklist, we have a Dark Trooper at home, a Lasers Only loadout, the Boombringer, not to be confused with the Team Killer, the Wall, Lazy Boy models for Eradicate and Outpost Blitz missions, and honestly my go-to, Machine Gun is actually my primary. If you have any other tips and tricks for players, or fun loadouts of your own, please leave them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially Shadow, Call Me Josh, and Josh Bart. Have a good one, and if you haven't, have yourself a cup of liberty.